What is going on, everybody? It is Trib from Trib Talks here, here to discuss the Jacksonville Jaguars' loss to the Carolina Panthers, 34 to 27. There were a lot of ups in this game, but there were also a lot of downs, and it is really insane to me, like how much of a difference Gardner Minshew is really making to this Jacksonville Jaguar team. And that's not just because I'm a complete Gardner Minshew stand like the rest of you, but that's because anytime he's out there, you have an opportunity to score and you have an opportunity to win. And it's been a long time, if ever, that the Jaguars have felt that, or at least how I've felt as a Jags fan, because I've been around since about 07. So that was still left, which, you know, that was post Burnell. So, you know, to have a guy out there that you know can win you football games and you know can lead you and put you in successful situations, it's insane. And we have a lot of praise to say about Gardner Minshew. We have a lot of praise to say about DJ Chark as well. And we have a lot of downgrades to give to the defense. But before I do that, why don't you drop a like down below if you are ready for the Jacksonville Jaguars to take on the New Orleans Saints next week also make sure you click down below your boy is now a part of the sports illustrated affiliated jaguars maven community where i write articles basically every day discussing and talking about the jacksonville jaguars my first article is up right now where i discuss whose stock went up in this game and whose stock went down and you can check that out by clicking the link down below also go give my guy john shipley a follow on twitter he is the editor of that page. But without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Jacksonville Jaguars versus Carolina Panthers. Week number five, recap, position grades, and players of the week. Now, if there's one thing you learned on Treeb Talks, I hope you take away is that we don't fucks with tradition. Letter Kenny season seven? Season seven is coming out soon to Hulu. If you've never seen Letter Kenny, you need to get off your ass or get on your ass, I guess. Sit down. Watch it on Hulu. Terrific TV show. But like they say in that show, you don't fucks with tradition. So we're going to start things off by discussing the offensive side of the ball. And the Jaguars right now are a top five. Top five offense in the league right now with Gardner Minshew at the helm. That is wild. I don't think... When's the last time the Jags have been a top five offense? Like at any point in the season. I know it's week five, I know it's early, and if you're a fan of, like, the Panthers, per se, and you're watching this video, you're going to be like, oh, it's only week five, you know, of course you're top five. But when was the last time the Jaguars offense even sniffed a top five total offense? You know, there's been times, uh, I think 2017, we led the league in rushing offense, but we weren't close in total offense. We are definitely probably top 15, top 10, something like that, maybe at best. You know, but the fact that we have a top five total offense is insane. And the skill position guys, the running back Leonard Fournette, obviously, and Gardner Minshew are all playing terrific and are just feeding off of each other. You can tell that the energy that Gardner Minshew brings onto the field and the energy that these wide receivers have, um, as well as Leonard Fournette, who actually looks like he's having a good time running the football this year, which is just something that you love to see. You love to see Leonard Fournette involved, and you love to see him you know, being a part of this offense. Early in the season, it did not seem like Fournette was going to have that type of season season or that type of year you know where he would be a good running back there's times in week one and two where he'd just show up and you'd be like oh my god and there were still times in that game where he kind of made you feel like that you know where he had like 12 rushes for like 36 yards but then you know he busted out a big 40 yard run and he managed to get over 100 yards during that game the Jaguars did kind of shy away from using uh, Raquel Armstead as well. He didn't, I mean, he got his reps, don't get me wrong, like he was out there, but he was not out there as much as the Denver game. At least it didn't appear so. I don't know the exact stats. You know, maybe he did, but it was very quiet if that's how it was. Fournette was on the field for most of the, most of the time, and he also was doing very well as a pass blocker too for Gardner Minshew, making sure that, you know, guys weren't getting into his face, not making you know him make mistakes you know obviously there's some things to be said about the offensive line that we'll get into in a little bit where Gardner Minshew did fumble and we'll address that uh, when we talk about Gardner Minshew as well but for right now we're talking about the running backs and I think Leonard Fournette did a great job as a whole as a running back and I think the running backs are going to be getting a B plus grade from from me I don't think obviously it wasn't as impressive as the Denver game because how are you going to emulate a 225-yard game, you know, right back the next week? But he did get over 100 yards rushing. 
which you love to see out of Leonard Fournette, like I said. And he did have a big, you know, 40-yard run, which is also something that you like to see from Leonard Fournette. You like to see him make big plays. And it's crazy, you know. Like, now we have this offense, and it seems like this offense can compete in the shootout. And hopefully this defense can step up because, yeah, we're going to tear into the defense here in a little bit as well. But we are going to be giving the running backs as a whole a B-plus on the day. Next up, we are going to be talking about the offensive line. Now we're going to touch on the offensive line a little bit. And Andrew Norwell played terrible, and he looked like he scammed the Jaguars out of a lot of money. And it's weird because now, you know, you had the two guards that were rotating in and out with A.J. Cannon and Will Richardson. And, you know, that in itself to me isn't really a great idea. I think if you're an offensive lineman, you should be out there every single snap. You know, I think as a guy that used to play the offensive line position, you know, um, when you're out there with your guys, you know, it's better to have a solid starting five and a solid five out there literally at all times, you know, not swapping in guys at a guard position, especially, you know, somebody on the inside. But both of them are playing better football than Andrew Norwell, and the Jags might be at a spot right now where they're better off to start A.J. Can and Will Richardson at both guard positions. Will Richardson has played really good football this year. He played it good at the left tackle position, and he's played well at the guard position as well. So I think Will Richardson has definitely earned his spot on the offensive line as far as Norwell and A.J. can. I mean, it can be a toss-up, but, you know, you got to show Andrew Norwell that you mean business one way or another. And Tom Coughlin, if you're all about this disciplined shit, you know, if somebody's playing bad, you should bench him. And that's how it is with Andrew Norwell. There hasn't been a single game this year where he did not stand out as being bad. Like, he was legitimately, legitimately bad, and, like, all Jags fans see it. You know it's bad when you're on the offensive line and you stick out that much. If you're a good to mediocre offensive lineman, no one should ever talk about you because you just sit there, you do your job, and you make sure everything is done correctly and done right. You make sure that your form is good, and you make sure everybody around you is good, too. But if you're playing bad, you will get noticed. And that's how Andrew Norwell was, and he was put on notice, and he really brought down this offensive line as a whole. Guys like Jawan Taylor and Cam Robinson, too, you know, illegal man downfield calls, freaking holding calls, all of that. Like, this offensive line as a whole did not perform well. Brandon Linder had a pretty decent game, but what can you expect out of Brandon Linder, who's one of our most consecutive, constant, you know, good players out there. So, Brandon Linder obviously had a good game. But, you know, Jawan Taylor, everybody else really struggled. Cam Robinson, Andrew Norwell, the whole, you know, left side is just a revolving door back there. Gardner Minshew has to move up in the pocket. He has to be able to make plays necessary to put the Jaguars in successful situations. And when he doesn't have that kind of time, you know, he ends up showing that he's a rookie. And that's okay sometimes. And he fumbles the ball because they're not giving him time to throw the ball. And they're not giving him enough time to make a good decision. So Jawan Taylor, Cam Robinson, Andrew Norwell. Norwell, all those guys, they need to step up as a whole. This offensive line has played pretty pathetically all season long for a group that we really thought might be able to come together after all was said and done, but it has not done that. So this offensive line is going to be getting a D, and I would like to see Andrew Norwell not necessarily get disciplined per se, but, you know, get benched maybe. You know, like, let's see what Will Richardson and AJ Can can do because it's been embarrassing, it's been tough to watch, and this offensive line has definitely, definitely struggled. So I think a D grade is more than fair for them. Next up, we're going to be talking about the wide receivers and TJ Chark. I want to say sorry. Sorry to DJ Chark. I should have said this a long time ago, but I am very, very sorry. All throughout the offseason, I said, you know, DJ Chark's a guy that I think is kind of a project. And I think, you know, if he gets brought along, he could be kind of decent, but he needs to improve not look like he's so lost out there all the time and make sure that he makes the strides necessary to become a elite wide receiver. But I thought it would take him three, four years, you know, before any of that really materialized, you know, up until probably the end of his rookie contract. But DJ Chark is out there and he is playing phenomenal football. He had a career high 164 yards, which is only 10 yards less than all of the yards combined that he had the previous season. He has the most for sure hands on the team, which if you were to tell me that 
during the offseason that this year DJ Chark was going to have the most reliable hands out of any wide receivers for the Jaguars, I would have called you a liar. I would have said you were crazy. But holy moly, dude, like that sideline catch he had where he put both feet in bounds and he tried to reach for the end zone, you know, to the pylon, that was impressive, elite caliber wide receiver stuff. And he's top five in the league in receiving yards, and I think he's tied for first or tied for second in receiving touchdowns with five. He's on pace for 15 touchdowns and 1,500 receiving yards. Like, he is playing out of his mind right now. And the, the other guys, too, are stepping up, you know, making plays. Guys like D.D. Westbrook, who, you know, was a guy that a lot of people thought was going to be the number one guy. You know, this was going to be the guy Foles develops the chemistry too. This is a guy, you know, when Minshew came in, that Minshew is going to develop some chemistry too. But it's been really the DJ Chark show, and D.D. Westbrook has had some drops. But during this game, he played all right. He did good. You know, he did what he needed to do. Chris Conley, another guy who I think is playing really well. I just don't think Gardner Minshew tries getting him the ball all that much. Uh, Chris Conley and Marquise Lee especially, but Marquise Lee's never really on the field. Chris Conley's definitely on the field more than Marquise. Lee. But those are two guys that aren't really getting involved in the offense that I would like to see, you know, get more involved in the offense. It's a lot of Chark and it's a lot of Westbrook, but you know, to see guys like Keelan Cole, Marquise Lee, Chris Conley, like step up and, you know, be reliable targets. And the fact that they're solid enough to be good players, you know, Minshew is going to benefit from that and he's going to give them good balls. And he did that in this game. You know, he delivered a good ball to Chris Conley. That Hail Mary attempt that he had in the end zone, it was almost brought in by Chris Conley. Like, these wide receivers are benefiting from Gardner Minshew and Gardner Minshew is benefiting from these wide receivers. So these wide receivers are going to be getting an A on the day from me. And they, DJ Chark, man, they, I just, I can't say enough about him. He's playing out of his mind right now and he's playing terrific, terrific football. Now that tr takes us over to the quarterback position. Gardner Minshew, who posted a career high 375 yards, played really good. Really good at times, but there were some times where he showed that, yes, he is a rookie. You know, he struggled a little bit out there. There were a couple of times that he fumbled, two to be exact, and one of them, I think, was him trying to do a little bit too much, you know, in a knee brace especially, and, you know, one was Andrew Norwell's fault, letting a guy get right by him and ended up fumbling, scooping it up for six. That was the problem. The Jags forced Kyle Allen to fumble twice, too, I believe, but they didn't get on the ball, so they didn't get the turnover. But every time we fumbled the ball, the Panthers were on it. It was a turnover on de it was a turnover, you know, or a scoop and score. Like that's how they benefited from the turnovers, and that's how they ended up beating us because we had so many opportunities, so many opportunities to win this game. And Gardner Minshew had three chances from 30 yards out. And that last play, man, I just I wish. He didn't get such happy feet towards the end because, you know, he was scrambling out of the pocket, which, I mean, I get, I understand, you know, you're trying to find a lane to throw the ball, but with how those offensive lines playing, you know, maybe you should try and just hang in the pocket and just try and deliver one down the field. But Gardner Minshew, again, one of my favorite players in the league, if not my favorite player in the league, uh, he played terrific, had 375 yards, two touchdowns, and again, no interceptions, still only has one total on the year. And he played all right. He played good. I'm going to be giving him a A- minus on the day. That's going to be the lowest grade that he's received because, you know, he did at times show that he is a rookie quarterback. He does have some developing to do. He has some learning to do. But at, at times, too, he was out there and he was leading and he looked like he's been in the league for literally 15 freaking years. So Gardner Minshew gets an A- minus on the day. Now this offense's final grade is going to be brought down... <sighs> You know, I want to bring it down kind of a lot to really emphasize the fact that this offensive line needs to step up, but I'm going to be giving it a B- minus on the day. I thought the skill position players from the quarterbacks to the running backs to the wide receivers played excellent, excellent football. This offensive line struggled. I also didn't really mention James O'Shaughnessy, who James O'Shaughnessy just tore his ACL. That's really really unfortunate and hopefully Josh Oliver could come in and perform and play good football for us because as of right now we definitely definitely need it so Josh Oliver please get healthy soon please make a difference because average ass Jeff Swaim just isn't going to get it done James O'Shaughnessy's had a really solid season so far you know he's been one of the security blankets for Minshew you know he was going to him you know on like the third and threes and he had an impressive catch in that game as well and if I do recall I think it was on that catch that that knee injury did occur I could be wrong but I think that's when it happened but 
James O'Shaughnessy, again, you know, a good part of this offense. This offensive skill players are playing really, really well. And I think it also speaks volumes to, you know, the coaching of Keenan McCardell with these wide receivers and the development that, you know, DJ Tark has had, you know, D.D. Westbrook has had. You know, it's been insane the work that he's done with those two guys. And, you know, it can't be emphasized enough how well and how good of a job uh, Keenan McCardell has done with these wide receivers. So the skill position players, I praise y'all. Y'all did really well. This offensive line, though, definitely, definitely needs to step up. And let's talk about another area of the field that definitely, definitely needs to step up. Now we're going to be talking about the defensive side of the ball. And boy, oh boy, have things changed and have things really flipped on its side. It is really insane how our defense is so bad. You know, you know what I mean? Like without Telvin Smith, these this linebacking core is god awful. Without Jalen Ramsey, the secondary struggles mightily. And then, you know, guys like Jared Wilson, Ronnie Harrison are made out of glass. So we have like wing guard out there, like holding it down the safety position. Like this defense as a whole is a complete mess. And these guys on the defensive line just are not getting sacks. Like this they're getting QB pressures, and they're doing... No, they're not. I was about to say they're doing all right in the run game, but they're not. They're doing terrible, terrible in the run defense. Like, there's just nothing I can say really positive about any of these groups besides the secondary. So we're going to start off with the secondary. I thought they did a decent job, but that's just because basically Kyle Allen didn't pass, and A.J. Boye still let himself get beat on a deep route. So, you know, I still don't think the secondary really did their job to the best of their abilities. However, I think DJ Hayden is really underrated and is really underappreciated as far as his defense goes. From his coverage skills, from his blitzing skills, I think DJ Hayden is one of the best defensive players that the Jaguars have right now. He has played well. He gets after the quarterback when he comes off those blitzes. Like, he's fired off. He's fire. He comes off on fire off those edges when he's blitzing the quarterback. Like, DJ Hayden's really underappreciated. And I think he had a good game this week. And I think he's going to continue to be a vital part of this defense. And I hope that continues. So the secondary as a whole, they didn't play too well. But then again, Kyle Allen didn't really pass the ball too much. I'm going to be giving him a C on the day. I don't really think they did too much to impress me but again Kyle Allen didn't throw a whole lot this defensive line it's just hard it's hard because you know you know there's talent on this team you know there's talent on this defense by far there's talent on this defense I think a lot of it has to do with Todd Wash I think we should have left Todd Wash in Charlotte I think that should be the next person we fire because I don't know how you can run this style of defense and you know really just kind of like a dumbed down version of a defense with all this talent that you have and like this, these defensive line men are not getting after the quarterback they're not maintaining their lanes like it's just embarrassing to see like there's so many running lanes and most of it is from the defense just being out of position it's not even like the offensive line blowing these guys like four or five yards off the ball it's purely a position thing like they're out of position Yannick Ngakwe is way up the field there's a running lane right there he's had a problem with that basically his whole entire career you know he had the strip sack opportunity you know ends up getting the roughing the passer call like there are so many things that went wrong for this defensive line and there's so much talent to be had on this D line that I hope it steps up and I hope it gets better but I'm gonna give them a C minus on the day nothing they did necessarily blew me away now we're gonna be talking about the linebackers and I'm telling you one thing right now I didn't think we were gonna miss Telvin Smith that much but holy shit do we miss Telvin Smith we miss him a lot Miles Jack is just not playing good I don't understand like He's out there. He's missing tackles. Quincy Williams was a guy that I had a lot of hopes for heading into this season. But, but, in this game, he literally had more missed tackles than made tackles. Like, he did terrible. And then, uh, Najee Good came in, got shook like he was a high school football player, like he didn't belong in the NFL. Like, there's just so much wrong with these linebackers. And, you know, I like to see Miles Jack take it in stride as a leader saying that you know this loss is on him and that he needs to play better and he needs to do more for this defense as a leader 
and I agree with that. But these linebackers, you know, going to get no remorse from me. I'm going to be giving them a D on the day. They did not play good. Uh, Miles Jack had a had one really good play in coverage uh, on a third down, I believe, to cause a three and out. But other than that, these linebackers struggled, and it it's hard for me to give them any higher grade than that. As a whole, this defense is going to be getting a D plus. Uh, you you have one guy to game plan for. You come into this game knowing that Kyle Allen's the quarterback. You need to make him throw. Straight up. Just need to make him throw. You need to shut down Christian McCaffrey. Do everything in your power to stop Christian McCaffrey. And you didn't, like, do anything to stop him. Anything at all. And he, he dominated us. It was basically Christian McCaffrey against the Jacksonville Jaguars. That's what it was. And he dominated us. He killed us. And... As a defensive coordinator, you have to game plan better than that, and you have to make sure your team's more prepared than that because that was straight up embarrassing, and I hope it does not happen ever again. So I asked y'all in the community tab to ask me a question, and you'll get a shout-out on this video. We had five people ask a question. Some questions I ended up answering during the video, so I'm not going to answer every single one. I decided to pick one, and that is from Nathan the Ninja 56 and he said, what do you think truly costed the Jaguars the game in the Jaguars versus Panthers game? Coaching. Comes down to coaching on the defensive side of the ball. Literally, this offense did everything it can to be successful. And John DeFelupo, man, we got to give a lot of credit to him. I think he's put together, you know, obviously a top five offense. And he's, you know, putting things together, you know, during the next quarter of the season. I like to see that. I think that he has a lot of, you know, needs a lot of credit where credit is due on how well he is, you know, done with this Jaguars offense and Gardner Minshew's development, you know, guys like Keenan McCardell. I think even Doug Marone, man, deserves, you know, a fair shout that they've had a pretty good year coaching, but it comes down to Todd Wash. It comes down to Todd freaking Wash because it's like, you know who to game plan for. You know who to look out for. You know who to watch. You do. Plain as that. Plain as day. You know, it's Christian McCaffrey. All day long. Make Kyle Allen pass. And you still let him get 200-something yards. Fire Todd Wash. Hashtag Fire Todd Wash. Flood the comment section with that. But without further ado, we have some Players of the Week awards to give out. And this man's been gypped because I'm a Gardner Minshew stand, but he will not be gypped this week. I'm giving the Offensive Player of the Week to DJ Chark, without a doubt in my mind. He played out of his mind. His progression has been something to watch. It's been awesome. It's been insane. He definitely deserves to be Offensive Player of the Week. Defensive Player of the Week, I'm going to give it to... We we'll give it to DJ Hayden, you know, because I have to, I hyped up DJ Hayden a lot uh, during this video. He's really the only defensive player I hyped up, so we're going to be giving him a defensive player of the week award. Now, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching this video. This is Treeb Talks, signing off. And that was my Jacksonville Jaguars versus Carolina Panthers week number five recap. What'd you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Troop Talks or follow me on Instagram at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon to get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel four days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Those are just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.